every business needs more customers all the time. That's always everybody's number one problem usually is I need more customers. And so when you go from, I need more customers to how can I serve the people that are meant to be in my organization? How can I serve them well? everybody. We are live on Instagram right now and I'm recording a podcast. So the question came through, how can I naturally attract more clients? So first, who's your client? So I can really understand who we're talking to, but that is step number one. You need to know exactly who it is that you serve, Jessica. So do you know absolutely everything about your prospect? And I think if you don't know, you're usually best suited to serve the person you once were. Okay, so you sell a network marketing product. What made you purchase that network marketing product? What were some of the things that you were going through at that time where you're like, okay, I'm actually going to swipe my card. I'm going to go through the whole thing and actually buy this and try it out, even if I don't know it's going to work for me. What were some of the thoughts you were having in your mind? Like, why were you willing to to swipe that card? What did you think was going to change in your life because you said yes to buying that product? And just take some time to journal this all out and get it all written out really well. But I'll say for you, you, you sell a beauty product. I know you guys just came out with makeup. How fun. You've got to be showing the beauty and the aesthetics. If you're selling a beauty product, I better go to your page and I better see a whole lot of prettiness. And I'm not just talking about pretty people. I'm talking about like, what are the colors? What is the scheme on your page? What type of looks are you doing? What outfits are you showing? What makeup looks are you showing? Like you've got to be that girl if you want me to buy from you, right? Think about it. What made you purchase from the rep? that you bought it from. They probably represented something that you wanted. For instance, I just bought this new makeup and I can't even remember what it's called, but I kept seeing an ad for it. It kept popping up and it was basically like, you know, um, you can't mess it up because I'm always going in and out of my spray tan. And so my colors are always changing. And so it's supposedly the type of foundation where like it'll change to your skin. Okay. And so I was like, all right, all right, I'll try this out. But it kept showing up. It was like omnipresence and everybody's skin looked flawless. So it's solving a problem for me because I'm always annoyed when I have to do my own makeup. I'm like, does my foundation match? So they knew exactly what I'm thinking in my head because the ad said, are you sick of wondering if your makeup is blended in properly? And I'm like, oh my gosh, right? And so I freaking bought it. I I bought it on that ad when it said that. I was like, yes, they know the conversation that's happening in my mind. So if you're hopping on right now, remember we're talking about how do you naturally attract clients? You've got to understand who your prospect is and then create content that is going to serve that client. If you're in the beauty industry, you better be serving me at beauty. If you are in the coaching industry, what are you showing in your life that other people are going to want that is going to attract people to you? But I think sometimes we overcomplicate those things. Every business needs more customers all the time. That's always everybody's number one problem usually is I need more customers. And so when you go from I need more customers to How can I serve the people that are meant to be in my organization? How can I serve them well, right? What do they need to hear today? What do they need to see today? And if, again, if you're in the beauty industry, it's like, if your ideal client is a person that's busy, who has a lot going on and they need a quick five minute makeup routine so they can feel confident in their skin, be serving that up every single day. Be serving that up every single day. Okay. This is from Lori. Lori, I'm going to answer your question right now. Do you have advice for a science educator for children? How do I build up a brand like that? Okay. 
Actually, this gets me so excited, Lori Marie. We're going to answer this right now for you. Okay, if I was a science teacher and I wanted to monetize, and you guys, I'm coming out with a whole program on seriously helping you. So Lori, make sure to stay tuned, be on my email list, be listening to my podcast because it's coming in just a couple weeks. But here's what you have to understand. It all goes back to that first question. Who is the person that I'm serving? So if you're serving kids, actually, ultimately, who's going to be buying a product from you is the parent. So the thing I just bought for my nine-year-old, okay, it's a subscription box that an engineer on YouTube made. And it's, Channing is like super into it because he gets to like build these projects and like his mind thinks that way. So if I were you and I was a science teacher and I want people to start thinking differently, what I would do is how can I put a science experiment like in a box, right? Like how can I send these home that are safe for kids to do with parent supervision where it's teaching kids to think about the scientific method, but it's also all in one. Because for me as a parent, like for Channing to do these projects, I'm not gonna go out and buy all these things because- I don't even know what it is that I would buy to make a project for him, right? So I love that I just bought the year subscription and it comes to him every month and he's going to be able to use that, you know, part of his brain that loves to build and create. And all I have to do is I just watch him. Like he could do the whole thing by himself, but it's so fun to watch his little mind. So that's what I would do if I was a science teacher is make science fun again for kids, put science projects in a box. I paid $2.99 for the year for him to get a box sent to him every single month. And the way that this guy got a huge following was he, I can't remember his name, but uh, he is on YouTube and he just goes live and he, I mean, he has a huge operation now, but he just goes on there and shows how he invents all this stuff. Now, Channing, if you ask him what he wants to do, he says, I want to be an inventor. So how do you go on and show your science projects and show how fun science could be either using short form video on TikTok, you could use short form video on YouTube, but honestly, the science projects are going to do like really, really good with doing long form video, right? So that sounds like a plan, Lori Marie, tell me how it goes. I think every single one of you have a gift. You have a talent that is unique to you and think about it. What comes naturally to you, what you think is easy, where you're like, okay, duh, doesn't everybody think like that is normally not (laughs) normal for other people. And so you have to start thinking, okay, the thing that comes naturally to me is the thing I need to teach and the thing I need to give out to the world. And that's exactly actually what I'm going to be teaching everybody inside of my new virtual live event I'm hosting on Oct- in October. So make sure to be subscribed to the podcast, follow me on social media because I'll be giving you out all the details on this three day live event. It's completely free for you to join and learn all about it. Okay, there's so many things. Okay, how do you typically start your mornings? Great question. I. Uh, So I want to preface this with saying that I have a 13-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 9-year-old. So I'm at a different stage in life than when I had a newborn and a 2-year-old and a 4-year-old. And I I think that's really important to say because you're going to go through seasons in your life where you're going to have to do what's best for you. You can't follow the guru's advice all the time. you got to create your own routine. So, But I'm in a place where all of my kids sleep through the night. Even Bentley sleeps through the night, (laughs) okay? So I get a good night's sleep and I have my alarm go off at 5.30. And at 5.30, I have it go off to a worship song because I like to wake up slowly and just like not (gasps) like freak out and have my nervous system going crazy. I like to just go and start my day with worshiping God. And that's actually what I do next is I go and open up my Bible. Right now I'm reading through the book of John and just like hearing the words of Jesus because he's my ultimate role model. He's my example for everything I do in life. And so I just want to know him more and I want to have those Christ-like qualities in my business, in my marriage and being a mom. And so that's really how I started off is slow. And my mom lives with me now. She lives in our other house, but She comes in at about 6.15 and she'll make me coffee because she makes the best coffee. She does like this 
cinnamon and cayenne thing that's freaking good with espresso. So she makes me that. And then we sit there and we just journal together. And it's really a great way to start off slow and just get all of my thoughts. When I say journal, okay, because some people think, oh, what the heck is, what do I got to write? Like, what question am I answering? I do a brain dump. Okay. And that's exactly what it is. It is a brain dump. I get every thought out on paper because sometimes like you have weird dreams. Sometimes like you have all these crazy things that you wake up with. And I just like to write it all out on paper and see, okay, what am I hallucinating about? What is real? What do I need to focus on today? And then I go onto a gratitude rampage where I just start listing out everybody that I'm grateful for. And I say everybody because you'll notice when you start getting into gratitude and making it a practice, you're usually the most grateful for people. And I just have a long list of all these amazing people that I'm grateful for in my life. And then of course, there are some things and some experiences that I'm grateful for too, but it ends up every morning, I just write out that gratitude list of, of people and Bentley, my little doggy. So that's what my morning routine looks like. And then I got to get the kids off to school. I wake them up about seven o'clock and we're like, we're going ham until they're at school. So yeah, so my mornings didn't always look like that. I used to get as much sleep as possible and (laughs) then wake up with the kids and kind of find the me time throughout the day. So it just looks at, you know, what season is in your life. But if you could take anything away, it's, you know, get clear. You want clarity of thought. And you also want to be poured into, for me, that's the Lord. I just want to have that, my cup filled up with him and how he does things. Because Kayla doing things on her own is not pretty. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like it. I don't recommend it. Okay. I have another one. So hopefully that helps, Shauna Marie. Best way to launch something new. I'm in the beauty service industry. Okay. Yes. And I love this. This is Pamp Her Parlor. I love it. So how to launch something new. You have got to create the need for something new. And this is what most people do a very bad job of. And I have to admit, I've done the same thing. I get excited about something I'm selling. And then I just think people are going to buy it because it's awesome. And that's not necessarily the case. So again, if you're in the beauty service industry, which my first question was in that too, you got to create the need for the product and the problem that you solve. So what I would be doing in the pre-launch phase, so before you launch the big thing, I would be talking about why this problem exists in the beauty industry. So let's say, you know, you are, uh, you do microblading. I don't know if this is what you do, Pamper, but I'm just gonna say this. You are a microblader and you wanna teach other people how to microblade. Okay, that's awesome. So what I would be doing is creating a community of everybody that's in the beauty industry. And I would be talking about why there is a need for more people that know how to do permanent makeup and do it well. And I'd be showing botch jobs and I'd be showing all these people who do it wrong and, and how there's so much more than just being a microblade artist. You also need to know how to run a business and, and talk about the problem, 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 drill it into people and then always offer your solution. And I'm going to be talking about this hardcore in my three-day live event that's coming up in October. So if you're just tuning in right now, I want to make sure that you follow me on social media, listen into my podcast, because you're going to get an invitation to this free live event where I'm going to teach you exactly my process and methodology on how to make a lot of money launching anything. So remember, create that need. Talk about the problem. And if you don't know what to talk about, talk about the problem over and over again and point people to you. You always wanna be pointing people to you. You want to make sure that people understand that the only way that they're gonna solve this problem is by listening to you. How do they know that? Well, you gotta start building up your authority. You've gotta start talking about your credibility. So again, if you're a microblader, okay, how many people have you microbladed? How much money have you made in the industry? How many people have you helped? Have you mentored? You gotta start being the best self promoter Ever. And I know it seems a little bit weird when you are doing the self-promotion, but I promise you, nobody's going to be able to promote you like you. And there are things that people need to know about you in order to know, like, and trust you, and then eventually buy from you. So make sure to be weaving that into the pre-launch phase as well. So I'm glad you like that, Shauna. Hopefully that helps you pamper parlor. 
She's launching ear piercings. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that changes the tune here, but a little bit. But again, creating the need. I would be showing, how do you create the need? I need some ear piercings here. Okay. Talk about all the bad jobs that people have gotten. I, okay, funny story. You could share this. I actually want you to share this on your social media. My friend's daughter bought a freaking ear piercing gun on Amazon. And we were at a 4th of July party and I always wanted like three holes right here. And she brought it. She was 12 years old. And I go, oh, I'll be the guinea pig. You could, you could pierce me first. Boom, boom. She gives me three, three holes. And what happens about two days later? I get infected and it's bad. You guys like I, it's, it's bad. Okay. So I had to take them out. I had to, it was this whole healing process. My ears hurt forever, but you got to go to somebody that's experienced or else you really can get hurt. Like luckily I didn't get keloids or anything like that. Right. So hopefully that helps. Lindsay says, are you a fan of low tie? Lindsay, I love you. Uh, are you a fan of low ticket offers ever? I keep getting told to increase my prices, but wondering about a couple low ticket. Okay. I will sing this from the rooftop. High ticket is where it's at. High ticket. When I say high ticket, if you're new to this industry, high ticket is really anything above $3,000. Okay. And the reason why I love a high ticket offer is because there's, they're, they're more of a high quality client. I used to have a membership that was at 1.30 a month. And then it was 60 a month. And they were, I'm telling you, and I have clients that have paid me multiple six figures to work with them. And guess who the pain in the butt clients were? And I'm not saying all of them. I'm not saying 100% of the time, the $37 a month people, because they, they thought they, they thought I should give them my firstborn child for $37. And I'm like, uh, no, that's not happening. Okay. You get what you get and you don't throw fit. And they just want so much for, for that low ticket. And so I see with like in the multiple six figure, figure clients are my favorite. I highly serve them and they are also the most respectful and the most grateful out of every single one of my clients that I've had. Okay. And so I love a good high ticket offer for that reason. The second reason is because the more that they pay, the more that they pay attention. So you could think about it. You buy cheapy sunglasses at Target. Okay. You walk in, you get a, you know, a $10 pair of sunglasses that you're not worried about losing because you paid $10 for them. Now, if you walk in to a Ray-Ban store and you spend $350 on, on those sunglasses, do you care about them a little bit more? Yes. You put them back in the freaking case. You clean them off every time. You know exactly where those Ray-Bans are located in your car and in your purse because you paid a lot of money for them. So it's that same mindset with a coaching offer. If the more I pay for something, the more I'm going to show up on time, the more I'm going to implement absolutely everything that my coach tells me to do because I better get an ROI on it. Okay. Then the third thing I'm going to tell you about low ticket offers, you've got to have money to invest in growing your audience because on a low ticket offer, the average is about a three month subscription. So most people will cancel after three months. So you've got to have the money to continually add people to that pipeline to keep that residual at a great number that gets you excited. And you've also got to, you know, invest in a community manager to manage questions that people have and all that kind of stuff. You've also got to have somebody that manages the, uh, when people don't are on auto pay, and then their card doesn't go through, you got to manage the declines. You got to have somebody that's reaching out about that. So you've got to have a bigger audience to make it worth your time. You know, if, if it's not going to help you hit your dream income and you're just doing it because people want it, don't do it. It has to be in alignment with your overall plan and vision of how you want to spend your days. So hopefully that helps Lindsay. Okay. So she says, I'm looking for a mentor for my marketing agency. I haven't landed a client yet. And I really think someone could help me get to the next level. Well, Jennifer, you could hire me because I could help you out with that. Okay. So hit me up. I have applications in my available in my bio. So if you just go in there and you fill out an application, we could help you out with that. But I am going to, so this is interesting, right? You're looking for clients for a marketing agency. So you're helping people market their business, but you're what's happening with marketing your own business. 
what's not landing there? Like, are you just not implementing the things that you know? You should have a client if you know marketing and you're going to be doing somebody else's marketing. So that's the first thing. If I were to, if you were to hire me, that's what I would tell you. I would be like, uh, we need to look at your marketing process because are you implementing everything that you're doing for other people? Because in any industry, the best marketers win. Done, plain and simple. That is how it is. And so you got to make sure that your marketing process is actually going to convert for those people. And when you can show, like, let's say you're just marketing yourself like crazy and your agency like looks like bomb and people are just have a wait list. You eventually have a wait list for your marketing agency. It's going to be a very easy sell to people to hire you because it's like, well, clearly like I'm on this wait list because clearly, you know, marketing and you know, your game. So hopefully that helps. And, you know, I'm saying that in lots of love. Tracy, how did you get your six figure clients? Yeah. So really great question. And actually I'm teaching a select few this Tracy. So if you're interested in working one-on-one with me and me really breaking down the process of how I do it, I would absolutely love to show you, um, how to do that. But, uh, you know, it goes back to this, like everything that I've taught on this live right now is you've got to understand who you're serving. You got to understand who you're serving and what problem you solve for people And, you know, all of my clients are actually in different industries. So I think that's really interesting, but the things that they struggle with are really the same. And what it is usually is they have a lot of mind stuff happening. That's preventing them from getting to that eight figure level. And I can go in there and I'm like working it all out. So, uh, yeah, so I, I think that hopefully explains like, um, everybody has a common theme and I'm constantly sharing that on my social media, but really more on my podcast about the really high level things that entrepreneurs are struggling with when it comes to scaling their business. And yeah, and I make it very luxury. Some coaches, they're very much like, well, I sell sessions. Okay. Like, I'm not going to a personal trainer. Like this, you're doing life with me. Like for the next year, for the next several years, I have one client that's been with me for four years. Like we are doing life together and we are walking through some heavy freaking things. And if it's going down, like I want you to have my back. And when it's going up, I want you to have my back because there's so many things that happen every up level you go through. And so I always think like, how, what do I wish I would have had five years ago? Cause I'm serving a former version of me. And so that's what you want to think about. Like, you know, how do you really actually serve people? And what were all of the things that I was going through that I wish I would have had in a coach? Cause I've gone through and worked with so many different coaches, so many different programs. And I have still yet to find somebody like me that can really do the strategy, the mindset and the spiritual stuff all together. And so that's what I, you know, I bring a whole shakalaka effect, but you probably have that same type of mojo and the same type of thing you do. But when you really focus on who you were five years ago, it becomes a lot easier to help people, huh, Ben Lee? So next question is how do you write a book? Oh my gosh, I should write a novel on how to write a book and then create a whole course that goes with it. But here are some things that I want you to be thinking about if you are somebody that wants to write a book, which a lot of you guys listening in are probably like, yeah, you got a book in you, right? So you need to decide if you want to go the self-publishing route or the publishing route. And I want to explain the two, and this is probably going to be my last question, but you guys can uh, put more questions in the question box and I will come on later to my podcast and answer them. So Self-publishing. The really great thing about self-publishing is you will own absolutely everything when it comes to your book. You get the final say on everything, baby girl. Okay. That's amazing. Now, the downside to that is you've got to pay for everything. So all the marketing, absolutely the editor, the graphics, like everything you're paying for it. You're footing that bill. Okay. But, you know, it's also fun because you have complete creative rights to that book. Now, the other con to it too is you probably 
in the beginning would not get featured in national bookstores because they're going to be looking to partner with publishers or already known authors. So that's the downside. And that is exactly why I went the traditional publishing route because I want to be in national bookstores, right? That's my goal. I want to be on the New York Times bestselling list and I know what my goals are. So that's why I decided to go that route. The pros of it is they really help you out a lot. There's a complete marketing team. You have a editor. Well, you have several editors that help you get the book in the right spot. That's going to change lives. They do all the illustrations. Now the con to that, right? I wanted to name my book, Love Little Me. And I was stuck on that name. That's how they bought the book, actually. They gave me my advance with the proposal and then title of Love Little Me. And then after I wrote the book, they're like, the title is not Love Little Me and it will not sell. And we're not, that's not the, that's not it. That's not it. And so I was like devastated. Like I called my agent and I was like, how do I get out of this contract? Because it has to be Love Little Me. And I was pissed. And I said, well, you know, come back to me with the best names that you guys can come up with. And honestly, when I found out what the name of my book was going to be, I was pissed because I was like, gosh, like it kind of sounds basic. Okay. But then they talked me into it. And so the name of my book is called, what do you really want? And then I was like, actually like basic is better in this case, because you don't want people to be confused. It's, it comes back to marketing 101. If you confuse, you lose people. And so people look at my book and what do you really want? They know exactly what they're going to get from reading out that book. I'm going to know what I want by the end of this book, (laughs) which is awesome. That's exactly what they are going to get. Now, if the title would have remained Love Little Me, people probably that are looking to get what they want in life might, might have passed on by that because they're like, what does that mean? Love Little Me. I don't even know who little me is. Right. And so that was the help of the publisher. Can you imagine if I would have self-published and called it that I probably would have sold less books. So I'm really excited that I went with the publisher and obviously they, they told me it wasn't like a up for discussion type of situation. It was like, it is not that. (laughs) So here are your options. (laughs) So, uh, it was good because I think it's going to help with the book sales and stuff like that. Also, you get an advance with the publishing route And they have a huge, like my book has already been sold in all, in all nationwide bookstores. You can get it in Target. You can get it on Barnes and Noble. You can get it on thrift books. You can get it everywhere. Amazon. So, uh, they did all that. So that was really awesome. And I'm excited. I cannot believe I'm in freaking Barnes and Noble and I can't wait to do book signings. It's going to be so fun, but the book actually like won't be in your hands until March 5th. Okay. So anyways, I love all of you that have you know, been along for this journey. It's been two years. So how do you write a book? You've got to figure out what your exit strategy is first, right? Like what's your end game here? My end game was more books and more books, more stages, and a lot of other things that come along with the books. And so it made sense for me to go to the publishing route. If I wanted to just grow my email list and, you know, have complete creative control over my book, I would have self-published. And that is that. So you got to find out what is important to you and really where you're headed in your career, right? So, okay, I'm going to let you all go. I had so much fun on this Instagram live. And remember, if you're just hopping on right now, you can go and listen to this on my podcast called The Crafted Entrepreneur. And this will actually come out in just a couple of days. So make sure to subscribe on Spotify or uh, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts, really. Crafted Entrepreneur with Kayla Craft. And you'll be able to hear all these amazing things that we talked about today. How to attract your dream clients, how to write your six-figure offers. Oh my gosh, so many good things. Okay, so all of you guys were lucky because you guys got to see Bentley today. Ah. <laughs> okay, bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you.